take 12. Okay, maybe not 12. Technology and me, I'm sure. There's a book there. I'm gonna sit in Sukhasan. So have your legs apart and make sure your weight is even on your buttock bones. If this is uncomfortable on your knees, you can sit kneeling or cross legs or your legs out in front. So whatever's comfortable for you. I've bent my left leg in and now bend your right leg in and the foot gets posted in the gap. Rest the hands on the thighs and lift the spine. Relax the shoulders. Relax the eyes and release the tongue. Levelize the sides of the waist. Let the breath come wide and smooth up into the chest. Lengthen through the back of the neck. Lengthen through the, the back chest, the lower back. So that the sacrum feels light, but then the base of the sacrum the tailbone area, lengthen that away from the crown of the head. So let the tailbone go down towards the earth. Relax the face. Relax the shoulders. So the inner body ascends as the outer body releases and relaxes so the skin is soft. Allow the heart center to become known. And just observe how you're breathing, how you're feeling. And then bring the hands to Namaskarasana. Use the base of the thumbs as a guide to lift the sternum upwards and encourage the breath into the four corners of the chest without breathing up into your shoulders. So the breath sweeps underneath the collarbones. Bow the head down, release the hands, open the eyes and raise the face. Okay, you're going to need a bolster or a couple of foam pads with a blanket or I've got this Zafu, I think it's called a Zafu meditation cushion. I think the Zafu ones might be um, crescent shaped, I'm not sure. So all I'm going to do is Supta Baddha Konasana with my feet on a raise. So you're going to lie down, Supta means supine, Baddha is bound, Konasana is angle pose. So you're going to lie down and then rest back the feet are slightly higher than your bottom, make sure your lower back feels completely comfortable. Interlace your fingers, push the palms away from you, and then bring the top of the hands onto the crown of the head. So the armpit chest is as open as the groins. So you've got the double diamond shape. And now you observed the heart center and the breath whilst you were sitting up and now observe the breath again here. Turn the palms down, change the interlace the fingers and then push the palms away again. And again, as with all my videos, if there's a pose that doesn't feel quite right, you can sit out, you can change the arm position. You can have the hands out by your shoulders, you can have them stretched over your head, resting on your tummy if that feels um, more beneficial for you today. Me, I'm trying to get a suntan on my armpits, not really.
And then release the hands to the tummy, to the abdomen. Just let them be soft there for a little while. Place your hands now under the thighs, roll the feet towards whatever propage they're on, or you can do it flat if it was more comfortable. Roll to your side and come to sitting, Vajrasana. So you can be on a blanket or you can be um, just on your mat, depending on the comfort of your knees. So I should, I've got a blanket here, I've got two blocks, a cushion and a belt. Sit your um, bottom on your heels and just bring your legs together. Tuck the outer ankles in. So again, if this is not comfy, then you can find another position to be comfortable. Uh, Janet, if you're watching this one, then just be up on your knees. We're stretching forwards next. So when you're kneeling in Vajrasana, the hips are together, the knees are together. And notice how balanced you are. When you take the knees apart, can you be as level on your shin bones or do you roll to the outer edge of one shin bone or the other? So you have to be aware of that. So lean forwards, separate the knees. Just need to slide sideways just a little so I'm on more level ground. With the knees separate, just let yourself rotate from the pelvis, go down, lengthen forwards on the body and rest the head down. Keep the shoulders broad. Face soft, eyes quiet. And then transition into dog head down, Adam Wakushvanasan. So come up onto your hands. I'm going to have my feet and hands as wide as my mat. Heels stretch back. Spine lengthens to the crown of the head. Legs are firm. Taking those legs back more and more and more. Top of the thighs move back. You might want to wriggle those arms slightly further forwards if you feel like, um, if you feel so inclined, if you feel like your spine needs a little bit more length. But it's not all about the length, it's also about a width of the body as well. And you're going to walk your hands back, come onto your feet. You can bend the knees if you need to, Uttanasana. So hold the elbows from the sides of the waist, lengthen down. Spread out the back of the thighs. Abdominal area is broad and wide. Backs of the knees are open and the ligaments either sides of the knees feel long so don't just shoot those knees back but try and lengthen the ligaments of the knees. Change your clasp of the elbows, lengthen, breathe. And then place your hands to your hips. Inhale, come up, pressing down into those feet, bending the knees if necessary, and then come to standing in the centre of your mat. Feet together, legs together. Raise the arms up, stretch up. Feel how that is in your body. And then exhale, lower the arms down. Now take the feet wide, uh, hip distance. All right? Press down into the feet, raise the arms up. Feel how different that feels. And then lower the arms down and bring the legs back together again. Okay, so we've got Trikonasana next. Uh, step or jump your legs wide. Stretch out the arms, turn the left toes in, turn the right leg out, take your right hand and put it on your waist, stretch your left arm up, exhale, go down. We've just gone the other way from normal. Put your hand onto the brick and lift the chest. Press down into the feet. Take the top arm up, widen the chest. Breathe. Inhale, come up, 
Bring the feet to face forwards. Open out the chest. Turn the left toes in a little. Turn the whole of the right leg out to 90 degrees. If I hadn't said anything, would you have noticed? <laughs> Exhale, go down. I'm going to grab my block. Have your hand on your waist and just turn those ribs back. Once you've turned those ribs back, take that top arm up. Look up towards the top hand. Breathe. Press into the back foot, working those legs. So if you start to feel certain discomforts in the poses, you have to adjust internally or come out to change those patterns. It's a learning process. Inhale, come up forever interesting. Feet to face forwards. Walk or jump the legs together. Stand tall. Okay, we're going to try trick on asana again. I want you to see if you can take your legs just a little bit wider because it's a little, you know, it's about space today. So when you're ready, legs apart. Now have a look and just see. Are you happier wriggling them out one more inch? Okay, now can you extend not just to the hands, but can you think about lengthening from the sternum right out, as if the energy goes out past your fingertips. We're gonna do the opposite way again, just to shake the changes. Turn your right toes in a little. Turn the whole of the left leg out to 90 degrees. Draw the thighs up, open that chest. And I want you to lift those hands so you're giving yourself space across the chest, space in the legs, strong legs. Exhale, go down. And now again, shoulder blades deep into the back, pressing down into those feet, create an openness. Now, the more you start to rotate the thighs away from each other, the more you try and lift that top hip away from that lower hip. So you're creating a length there, the more you'll feel your body wanting to turn of its own accord. Breathe. Arches lifted, legs firm. Stand well in both feet. Release that top hand down. Press into that back foot, press into the front foot. Inhale, come up. Bring the feet to face forwards. Stretch out, make your arms like wings, like you're trying to take off. And now left foot in, right leg out. Standing down into those feet. Exhale, go down, hand to waist if you wish. Okay, you might want to wriggle that back foot out a little bit more. Give your spine some length, give the waist some length. Take that top arm up, make like it's the best stretch in the world. Really fill your space here, roll the thighs away from each other. Outer blades, press them down, lift your heart, breathe. Be aware, though, that the spine feels long, not back bending, okay? Turn the head, look up towards the thumb. And then release the hand down. Press down into those feet. So make sure those feet are both um, sort of in Tadasan, pressing into the floor. Inhale, come up. Bring the feet to face forwards. Legs together. Stand tall. I'll just take my mala off. All right, we've got Paragasan next, the gate latch pose. So you're going to come down onto your knees. If you're on a hard floor or a skinny mat, put a blanket underneath your, your knees. I'm also, just for the connection of the legs, I'm going to have a brick both ends to put my feet on. And here we go, there's my blanket. Okay. So I'm kneeling. Again, we're going to go to the left first and then to the right. Just otherwise we do everything the same way all the time and I thought it'd make a change. <laughs> I'm running with it. So Paragarsan, this foot is in line with the front knee. Now if you've got tight hips, let that foot come a little bit further forwards. And then from here, all I want you to do is I want you to draw the kneecap up. I want you to stretch out this arm and then you're going to keep a nice length. So you're going to fold over this hip. So if you take this right hand and bring it around to hold your thigh, then think about folding over that hip, keeping the waist long, and then place your hand to the shin. Okay, don't go down any further than that. And now make space. 
Use that lower arm to rotate the body, shoulder blade deep into the back, turn the palm and stretch it over your head. So you're looking for a nice length for that psoas muscle. Breathe. Keep the space on that right side, as, uh, left side as well. So the right psoas muscle is extending. You can feel that length. It's reflected in the length of the waist, but not at the expense of the lower waist. And then turn the hand back, stretch back and change sides. Okay, hands on your hips, step your right leg out. You can see how much you want to slide that leg out, but make sure that you're very much in that standing leg as well. Check the foot is on the floor, little toes on the floor. Okay, stretch this arm up and take your left hand around. That's to remind that uh, right buttock to stay in. And if you can get your hand around onto the thigh, then you can use your hand to turn the thigh and roll the body away. Lengthen over that right leg and bring the hand down onto the shin. Turn the body back. Stretch the top arm up like you're about to um, hug your favorite auntie and then turn the hand, arm over the head. Breathe. So you want to compare the left and the right side, feel what's going on. Relax the eyes and release the tongue. Breath is wide and smooth. Turning those ribs. Stretch up that arm, inhale, come up, bring the feet together and stand up again. Okay, so you can just sit down, take a few moments and then we're going to come back to Trikonasan, okay? So I've just removed my blanket. Uh, we'll forget the bricks this time unless you want to use them. Ready? Trikonasan, legs wide. Open out across the chest, turn the right toes in a little, turn the whole of the left leg out to 90 degrees. Press down into the feet, keep the front face of the hips long, tailbone lengthening down, exhale, go down, trikonasan. Breath is wide and smooth, tongue passive, move that left buttock forwards. Roll those thighs away from each other and get the spine to lengthen. Inhale, come up. Bring the feet to face forwards. Left toes in a little, hold of the right leg out. Exhale, go down. Spine long. Lifting the arches on both feet, you'll start to notice how the body responds. Yeah, pressing the blades of the feet down, also the body responds. Making space between the hands, the body responds. Yeah, so every action has another reaction to it. And then we start to be able to use the body intelligently to make the poses feel more meditational. Extend up into that top arm, inhale, come up. Bring the feet to face forwards legs together. Stand tall, weight back in the heels, extend down into the um, tailbone, lift through the chest. We've got sideways stretch, we're going to go onto the elbow, legs wide. Left toes in, right leg out, resist with that back leg, exhale, bend the front leg down into a right angle, rest the elbow on the thigh. Take this right arm and bring it around the back of your body. Okay, now you might be able to get your hand on the inner thigh, you might not. Use this arm to keep, use your left arm to keep the left knee back. Press the left buttock forwards and press the right thigh back. Turn the ribs, turn the hips. Just look behind you. You can check that your um, hip is in line with the ankle and you can feel the work that's going on this inner leg. Stretch into that top arm, inhale, come up. Bring the feet to face forwards. Turn the left toes in a little, turn the whole of the right leg out to 90 degrees. Resist with that back leg, exhale, bend the front leg down to a right angle, 
Rest the um, right elbow on the right thigh, taking the right knee back. You can check the knee hasn't overshot the ankle. Left arm around the back. You can either press on that right buttock or you can open up that right thigh with your hands if you can reach. You might not have as long arms as me. Press that left thigh back. Make sure that the toes are lengthening. Try not to grip with the toes. That was a habit of mine for many, many years. The harder I tried, the more my toes gripped. Opening out across the groins. Arches lifted. You can just look behind you again. Take the arm up, stretch up. Bring the feet to face forwards. Legs together. Stand tall. Open out the chest. Okay, again, legs wide. Right foot in. Hold of the left leg out to 90 degrees. Exhale, bend the knee. Use the arm. So we're gonna bring this arm now on the inside edge of the leg and take your right arm straight up. Now press back with that left arm. Push that knee back and press the left buttock against it. Press the right thigh back as strongly as you're pressing that left buttock forwards. Now can you maintain that? And then maybe hold your ankle. If you can maintain that, maybe you can slide your hand around the back of the leg and then bring the arm over the head. Full pose, Uttita Paj Vakonasan. Both sides of the waist long. Take the arm up, inhale, come up. Bring the feet to face forwards. Open the chest out. Turn the left toes in a little. Turn the whole of the right leg out to 90 degrees. Keep that back foot pressing straight down into the floor. Exhale, bend the right, um, right leg. Bring the right hand down on the inside edge of that right leg and take the top arm up. Now, if you're on the fingertips, you've got more chance of lengthening. You're not then gonna rest down in the hand. Open out the thighs, press your right buttock forwards, left thigh back, foot still connecting like it's pressing straight down on the floor, that left foot. Right foot uh, is doing it easily. Can you make the left foot feel the same? You'll then feel the inner thigh working better. You can then maybe clasp your ankle or you can slide the hand around the back but keep pressing that knee then into that arm. It's really hard and then bring the arm over the head. It's not really hard, it's just strong. Extend through to the fingers, press down into that heel, breathe. Buttock forwards. Finding that place where you feel powerful and long. Press into the outer blade of that back foot, stretch the arm up, inhale, come up. Bring the feet to face forwards. Legs together, stand tall, extend down through the fingers, breathe. Okay, so the next pose we're gonna do is dog head down just to rebalance. So you can have the feet as wide as your mat. Okay, I want you to raise the arms up, stretch up, Feel the length that you've just created on the front of your body. Now, as much as dog head down folds from the hips, I want you to feel that you're gonna get that same length on the front of the body. So just pretend that you're pressing against a wall that's directly in front of you and feel how that engages the shoulders a little differently, okay? So now exhale, fold forwards from the hips. Now keep the very top of those thighs pressing back Really engage them as you walk your hands forwards. And then once you get to where your hands are gonna be placed, place those hands down, press those hands down and take the top of the thighs back. Breathe. Uh, 
and then step forwards to your hands. Feet as wide as your mat. Look forwards, Ardha Uttanasana. Now press the blades of the feet down again, draw up the arches as if you're in a little frame, a small door frame, cupboard door frame. Okay, so you're widening across the back of the body. From there, exhale, fold forwards, keeping a nice long spine, soft abdomen. Rest the hands, palms facing up. Take the shoulders away from the ears. So again, you're making space in the abdomen, space in the hips. Let the head hang. Look forwards, step back, dog head down, just a normal one. Small transition. Adho Mukha Virasana, bend the knees. Lie on your back if you knees don't want to be knelt upon with your knees cuddled in. Let the body sink down. And then inhale, come up. Supta Padangustasana 2 next. Okay, so it's the legs wide, legs stretching, legs wide. And you'll need your belt. And we're only taking the leg up to 90 degrees, even if you can get the leg higher. So it's about connecting the, the work in the hips, really. So I'm just going to put this blanket in against what will be your left side. You're going to have the right leg Actually, once the leg is up in the air, going off to the side a little bit. So you'll see mine's gone off the mat there. It's fine. So you're going to take the, the leg. You're going to bring it up to approximately 90 degrees. So you're not trying to pull it too far towards the face. Arm is nice and long. And I prefer to have the belt on the ball of the foot here so that I can press the ball of the foot into the belt and take the pressure off the hip. So the leg is working the leg. So the leg is strong, thigh suck back, leg comes out to the side, chest is open, and I slide my right leg out. Now make like a starfish. So I want you to really spread those toes on both feet so you can really feel the feet. And then also from the center of the collarbones, spread out. So it should feel like your wide leg trick on asan. And just take a good breath and just see whether the abdominal area feels broad and wide. And then inhale, come back up. Lower the leg down. Put the belt onto your right foot. Move your blanket or your bolster or whatever you've got to support that hip onto the other side. Move it right in so it's actually giving it some support. And then raise your right leg up. Press the right thigh back. Hold the belt as close to your foot as possible. So the arm is nice and long. Let that left leg come out to the side, but similar distance as the other side, so it's even. Spread out the toes, and then with an exhale, take the arm out, take the leg out, and again, make like a starfish. Both feet, be aware of them. Both hands, be aware of them. Both armpits, be aware of them. Both leg pits, be aware of them. Okay, leg groins. Legs really firm, as if you're wrapping the muscles around the bones. Again, observe the breath. Unhurried, nice, easy breathing. Do you feel like a cup of cocoa? Getting a nice rotation in the thighs. And then inhale, bring the leg back up and lower the leg down. Take some breaths. And then just to finish this little practice, roll to your side, sit up. Take whatever support that you did last time 
I had the bolster, sorry, the Zafu meditation cushion made by my lovely friend Alice. Soles of the feet together. Rest down. Feel how, whether the pelvis is comfortable, if not adjust. You may want to lie flat. You, if the prop doesn't work now, don't always think the prop will always work. Okay, interlace the fingers, palms away. Let the breath feel wide and smooth. Tongue passive and just observe. Do the shoulders feel a little easier? Do the armpits feel a little more open? Does the breath feel smoother? Relax the face, relax the eyes and release the tongue. Turn the palms down, change the interlace the fingers, turn the hands away and just rest them again on the top of the head. Allowing the breath to widen. And then release the hands down, roll to your side. So bring the legs together, roll to your side and sit up. We're going to go back to um, uh, Sudarsan or Sukhasan. So however you started, come back there now. So I had my, I, well, I had my right leg in, but I instructed left leg in. So I'm going to bring my right leg so you can bring your left leg in. And then you're going to bring your right leg in and post the toes between the back of the calf and the thigh. Start with your hands down. Lift up through the chest. Roll the collarbones back. And then bring the hands to Namaskarasan and just take some breaths here. Let the buttock bones be level and even and let them descend, but the inner edges of the buttock bones, picture drawing them up. And then release the palms up. You can bring the hands so the thumb and the index finger come together. The other fingers feel long and dynamic. Let the back of the hand just gently pressurize into the thighs. And feel the beautiful deep breath that you might have created with this practice. Relax the face. Relax the eyes and release the tongue. and deepen and widen the breath. Keep the eyes soft and breathe as if you're breathing behind the face. Turn the hands down when you're ready. You can stay here and keep breathing. Release the head, open the eyes and raise the face. That's it for me. Um, I recommend 
Shavasan. You can lie yourself down comfortably, make sure you're warm, pull up your coziness. And um, I'd like to thank you again for bearing with me. And I will hopefully see you again very soon.